for today. Um, it would have been nice if I could have gotten a little further, but that's fine. I'm going to start chapter um, uh, chapter three on Monday, right? So chapter three on Monday and Wednesday, to test on Friday, right? But Monday and Wednesday, make sure you ask for help if you need it, okay? So this is uh, 2.5, and we're talking about uh, translations and transformations. So translations just simply means, like if I was talking about a language, same word, different language, right? So so when I'm talking about it for functions, I'm talking about the same function, different location, right? And I, I guess I should really start with what I call the mother functions. I like to say mother functions because it sounds like I'm cursing a little bit. But the mother functions are usually uh, at the origin right kind of like a garden of whatever religion i don't i like to swear to, i swear to god i'm an atheist so so if i ever sound religious it's just because it's, math is my religion but there's always nice little parallels to math which used to be philosophy and thinking about the universe and god and that kind of thing so mother functions meaning the, starting at the origin right so, uh, like y equals x is a, is a mother function. And so, I, and most of these, I can see the point 0, 0, and 1, 1 on them. And so, obviously, this function, right? So, that's when I'm reducing it down to what is the mother function, I'm asking what is the simplest version of it. And it turns out that most of these go through the origin, right? So, y equals x squared, y equals x cubed, etc. right? These these I would call, right, the mother functions. And again, they all go through 0, 0, and 1, 1. So that I can really think of this one-by-one one box as this essential piece to my function. I can always think of that one-by-one one box on all of these mother functions. In fact, when I'm moving the function or manipulating the function, it's easier for me to move the box. And that's what I do. This is how I got myself to understand these, these transformations and translations. So um, everybody with me here, every, every one of these graphs has a, has a point zero zero one one on it. And, and when they don't, when a few of my mother functions don't have it on there, I'm going to force it on there. I'm going to pretend it's still central so that when I move my functions, I can again just look at this box. So of course there's there's parallels uh, to these or right we've got the square root of x. Not parallels but like uh, I don't know yeah maybe parallel universe. So again there's the square root of x. I've got y equals cube root of x. And again every every one of these things has that same box involved but these are these are the ones i call the mother functions and of course anytime i give you a function you would like to graph the mother function and the daughter function or it might be a granddaughter function and you, you'll see what i mean but you can clearly see the mother and the daughter look similar right um what's really interesting is like if I if I looked at like a curve like y equals x squared or that's a mother function or y equals uh, 2x squared minus 3x plus 1 that's a daughter function in the long run if I graph them both guess where they're both going they're both going to the same place in the long run and it's just like how we become our parents right whether it's nature or nurture we end up either looking just like them or acting just like them or etc in the long run and it's the true it's also true about mathematical functions anything you change at the beginning at the end will always return back to what the mother was like so it's quite quite fascinating 
So a few more mother functions. Let's see, uh, y equals 1 over x. This is this is one that kind of I cheat the, the uh, 1, 1 on. But you can see I do have the point 1, 1 on it. But I, again, I'm going to be looking at that box. So there is no point 0, 0 on that one, but I still see that same 1 by 1 box there, that 1 by 1 square attached to the origin, right? Uh, y equals 1 over x squared. These we all should have memorized completely. Um, maybe not yet, but let's see. e to the x we should know, and y equals ln of x. So those are chapter 5, but um, hopefully we'll, we'll have it eventually. These two aren't as easy to see, um, but this one, I've, I've got one zero, and this one I have, uh, sorry, zero one, and this one I have one zero. Uh, I think I have them all. Of course, you can see x, x squared, x cubed, x to the fourth, etc., square root of x, cube root of x, fourth root of x, they, they, you know, they continue the pattern. The, the key is I don't have any uh, other terms in it, right? Or I don't have any coefficients different than 1 here. And that's the key, and that's what we're going to start bringing in when we, we talk about transformations and translations. So mother functions, you should all be able to graph them on your calculator quickly. Go look at a table for them quickly, right? That type of thing. Um, so we'll do a couple of tables today. So we'll see, we'll see how you do with that. But we should be able to recognize all of these. And of course, in chapter 6, I'm going to bring in the trig functions. The sine, the cosine, the tangent, the secant, the cosecant, and the cotangent. So we'll bring all of those in. And then the inverse trigs. So um, there's lots of functions for you to have the basic shape of to be successful in calculus. And again, the, the secret is no one can stop you from when you're practicing at home from graphing them, right? And so that's going to be really key is that you're really savvy with the calculator and you can practice and, and get to know the properties of all of these things. Okay, let's start to look at some basic uh, translations. How are we doing here today? Nice, thank you. Mufad, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, Diego, thank you. I think Joe maybe said something there. Grace. Nice. So so let's take a look at it. Thank you, Muhammad. Let's take a look at a, a, a real simple transformation. Let's start with the square root of x function. So uh, um, so y equals square root of x is the mother, right? And we, we know the domain of this, we know the range of this, and we can get it all from the from the graph, right? We know the intercepts, we know if there's a asymptote or not. Um, everything is, is pretty obvious, right, from the graph. And so what we're going to take a look at are our first um, ref our reflections. So if I negate the outside, I'm negating y values. Outsides are y values. So I'm taking all my positive y values and turning them into negatives. Right? So there's y equals negative square root of x. So anytime I negate the outside of a function, I'm reflecting it about around the x-axis. Sorry about the x-axis, right? So I'm going to look for that. But of course, if I give you something like, right? If I if I give you something like y equals minus x squared, you're going to recognize the mother is x squared, right? And you're going to graph y equals x squared and the, this reflection. 
so, uh, but that's going to be the trick, is that can you recognize the mother, right? And so y equals square, uh, square root of negative x is changing the x, the in, inputs. And so this is now going to change positive x's to negative x's, right? So this one is going to be y equals square root of negative x, right? And this is a reflection about the, the y-axis. So if I know something about the mother, I know something about each of these reflections. These are, uh, in a sense, uh, they're kind of transformations or translations. I, don't, I think I'm making those the difference between them myself. I think I'm making it up myself. I like to say when the function's the exact same shape, but just shifted or reflected, I'm going to call it a translation. When I stretch it or compress it, when I squash it down or pull it up, I'm going to call that a transform, you know, almost like that stupid, I don't know if everyone had a stupid toy like this, but my little brother did in the 80s where the robot would turn into the car or something stupid like that. Transformers. Transformers. Transformer. So when, the, when it's actually changing the shape. Did this man really call Transformers a strictly 80s thing? Yeah, there's no way. And call the trash. I'm leaving this class. I'm home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Drop it. I'm just saying, I, I was already too old for toys then when it came out. So I'm just... Uh, but the idea is that it changes shape. And when it changes shape, when it re re retains shape, I'm calling those translations. Uh, I don't know what the book is calling it. But that's that's my thought about it. So we got these reflections, right? Pretty simple. Uh, and so we're going to look for them. Am I negating the outside? Am I negating the inside, etc.? Uh, let's do our horizontal shift and our our vertical shift. So let's go again with square root of x. <laughs> don't talk about my toys and let's do um, a horizontal shift so y equals square root of x uh, plus c and we're going to see that most of the time the interiors for at least our, our level of these functions the interiors will behave inversely and the exteriors will will behave directly so if i put a, a, a plus three here like y equals square root of x plus three you would think it's moving to the right it's actually moving to the left so so it turns out that these guys when i'm when i'm shifting by adding or subtracting on the inside it's going to move the, the graph in the inverse direction so if I'm adding 3, it's going to actually move it left 3. I like to have this little kind of phrase in my head as we're doing these types of things, and that is x's behave inversely, y's are direct. Our x vowels, x's inverse, y's direct. So, for example, if I put that shift outside, let me do that one in purple. It's just going to move it up three. And this is a, a, a key here, uh, a key here for calculus is that if I translate something, it won't change slopes. So, so if I'm looking at that 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 one one point, right? If I'm looking at that one one point on every curve, that point is not. It's just moving, right? It's just moving. 
from wherever I move the function. And then the tangent line on there will also not change. So, so what's interesting is if I have uh, a horizontal translation of a function, the secant line will translate the same and the tangent line will translate the same. So that's just a thought for, for Calc 1. But you can see it. Like if I'm on this mountain and I'm skiing on the mountain and they move the mountain, I'm still going to be stuck at the same spot on the mountain. Right? My skis are still going to have the same slope on the mountain. Now, what's, what's kind of nice uh, to do on this, and I'm, I'm going to build one right away here. Uh, I want to build one here that's kind of complicated, and I would invite you to do it. And so that is to go to Desmos. And as we, we build these things, build into it. Give me one second. Start to build into it all of these kind of controls, which is kind of cool, honestly. I mean, but you're talking to a nerd here. You're talking to someone who's, would, instead of having a robot that turns into a car, would rather be able to manipulate a function on a screen here. So I like y equals a times square root of b times x minus c. And I want to f make sure I'm thinking about all of these as um, as uh, factored. Whenever I'm talking about a, a, that coefficient of a negative one, I really want it to be factored. Um, uh, and oh, I have to add d, don't I? Yes. So plus d. Now I haven't talked about what b does yet. I have not talked about what B does yet. And whenever I'm looking at something like this, I also want to look at the mother function. I don't know why I won't change my color. There we go. So I've got the mother function in blue and the, and the translated function in red. So... Uh, we haven't talked about b yet, so let me let me set b at one, right, right where it was. Sorry, because that will do nothing, right? Multiplying by one does nothing. C is my translation, and you, notice I have an x minus c, so I'm already building in. If I have a positive c, it moves to the right, because I put the negative into my function, and so when at when c is zero, I'm not moving to the right at all. And D, where the hell I put D? Okay, D is my translation up. So you can see the function moving up as I adjust D. So if I get back to zero, I'm back to the origin. And A, I, 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 I'm going to show you this a little bit. This is, this is my first transformation when I, so I'm multiplying, when I'm multiplying, I'm going to stretch out the Y's. I'm pulling the Y's up because it's, it's outside, so it's affecting the Y's, so it's affecting it directly. So if I say take the height of my function and multiply it by 3, it's going to stretch it up 3. If, if I make it negative, it's, it's right, there's my negation. And then, um, and what, what does B do? So let me put A back at 1. What does B do is I, if I increase the inside multiple, I'm actually going to crush it down. So X's behave inversely. Instead of, when I'm saying multiply by 2 inside, I'm actually saying divide by 2. So I'm crushing it. When I increase my value of B, it's pushing everything toward the origin. It's hard to see it, but that's what's happening. And you'll see it when I do a table. And, of course, uh, if I pick a value that's smaller uh, than 1 for my B, um, I'm now pulling it this way. So when I'm dividing by... When I'm multiplying by something smaller than 1 in the x's, it's stretching it out. 
And when I'm multiplying by something bigger than 1 in the x's, it's crushing it down. X's behave inversely. X's behave inversely. So it's nice to be able to, you know, depending, depending on any shift I possibly have here, but I can see the relationship between my original function, the original function, the mother function, and what I've done to either transform or translate it. So there's a couple times a semester that we'll be, we'll be kind of playing around with that. Um, so y equals a times f of uh, b times x minus c all plus d is kind of our relationship that we're going to be dealing with. And we kind of, we want to deal with everything like we deal with, uh, uh, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, right? We want to. We want to deal with interiors first, right? And then, and then, et cetera. So, we, you, you know, you're just trying to make sure you take care of what needs the attention first. Um, and I put them in alphabetical order because I want to try and take care of A first, make sure I understand what that leading coefficient is doing. Then the coefficient of the interior. Then the, the horizontal shift and then the vertical shift is the, the thing that is least effective on, or, or, or changes nothing else but where you're moving the graph up or down. And we'll see this when we do our trig functions. We'll see this again. So we'll see y equals a uh, sine of b times x minus c all plus d, right? And that's going to take our sine function and move it somewhere or shift it somewhere, or, you know. But that's chapter 6. All right, let's take a look at a couple problems. The only, so this is kind of the theory on them, right? It's nice to do the graphs. Like if I, when I first remember learning this stuff on my, in, in my community college, I would just type in the mother function, type in the new function, and then adjust the new function, right? So, so like if I said. Like if I was given y equals square root of x, I would put that into y1 in my calculator. And in y2, they gave me another function like y equals uh, 2x. I'd want to see what that 2 is doing to the graph, right? I want to see what that 2 is doing to the graph and see what the 2 is doing to the table. And so I'm going to just manipulate, look at the graphs, look at the tables, right? So I, I, I still will do one like that today. Let me look at the homework here. So this is homework 12. This is our last one for this first test. It does suck a little bit that I'm going to start on chapter 3, but it won't bother you. I think the first time it will bother you is... Uh, so we're doing 12 and 1. No, sorry, 12 and 2, 3 and 4, that's an easy test. 5 and 6 could bother you a little bit, because I'll start on test on test 3, I'm going to do chapter 5 and chapter 6. It could bother you a little bit, because chapter 7 is very tough. So I'm going to be teaching chapter 7 when you're getting ready for your test 3. But I don't think the, this, this first test, me teaching chapter 3, will bother you at all. Oh, there's another mother function, square root of x. I forgot about that one. Um, so I want to move this to the right, 8 units, right? So, and my, ch my answer is going to change as I do this. So now it's saying it wants it moved, x squared moved left 8 units. So notice left for interior is opposite, right? The interior on the left is opposite. So just a bunch of simple translations. So this one shifted up 5, right? So, so what should I do? I should do my absolute value of x, escape the absolute value plus 5. Remember, if I'm adding something to the outside of the function, it's direct. So if I want it up 5, I'm just going to add 5, right? 
So these start really, really simple. Uh, this one, it's a graph of y equals x cubed plus 1, but I, but I want the thing reflected about the y-axis, right? So I want it, I want it negated uh, uh, about the y-axis, okay? So um, I have to do something to my interior, right? So I know my reflection of x is is gonna is gonna make change all of that. So what do you think for an answer here? So I've got I've, I've got the graph y equals x cubed plus one. And I want to reflect it about the y-axis. So first of all, I should be able to graph the mother, y equals x cubed, and then the daughter, y equals x cubed plus 1, right? Just shifting everything up. But then I want to negate the x's, right? So, so y1 is the mother, x cubed. y2 is the daughter, x cubed plus 1. She just moved upstairs. <laughs> And the uh, and now the granddaughter is going to be left-handed, so I'm in. The, uh, negative. Yep, I need to put in negative uh, x's. I need to negate the interiors, right? So negate the interiors, so I get I get one minus x cubed, and that will give me this guy or girl, daughter, granddaughter. So, so just based on what they tell you, you know, uh, and I don't think they, they do too much with the compressions and, and I, I, I don't think we're ready for compressions yet. So meaning multiplying inside is a compression. Dividing inside is, is, is a, is a, is a expansion stretch. Uh, but I'm pretty sure this, this homework doesn't do. No, it's not doing any multiplying inside, right? Because it, it gets a little bit tougher, so we're we're going to wait a little bit on those. Uh, I'm not I'm not going to do much of those with you yet. So, uh, but let me let me do one with the table before I move on to completing the square. So completing the square is the piece that your most students struggle with all the way through calculus. So I don't know why. I'm going to give you a step by step. It'll be easy. Let's do. Let's look at a, 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 a translation and a table, right? So, um, so I'll, we'll look at the mother. Uh, let's just use square root of x, right? And let's generate that that table for that. Right, so for my x and y, right, um, I like square numbers. So 0, square root of 0 is 0, 1, square root of 1 is 1, square root of 4 is 2, square root of 9 is 3. So this is a nice table for the mother function. I want, I want nice inputs and outputs on this, right? But I want to see what happens when I, when I look at a daughter or a granddaughter or a great-granddaughter of that particular function. For example two square roots of x minus three. I, I will, uh, the, the book will right now not be multiplying by x by anything by negative one or one. Okay, so it gets very complicated once I do that. So, but uh, I want to look at my daughter here. So I've got a daughter and I've got a granddaughter. The daughter, uh, well, what, what's affecting this immediately is the interior, right? So the interior says, I'm changing the interior, which means I'm not changing the exterior. So my table should stick at 0, 1, 2, 3 for the y's because I'm not changing the y's at all. If you see here, what's being happening first is my x's are being shifted by 3. Again, I want to think... Uh, please excuse my drunk Aunt Sally, inside first, right? So so what's happening to my x's 
what x will get me back to zero here? What x will get me back to the origin? What x will get me back to the mother is a three, right? Everybody agree with that? And remember, I said x's behave inversely. So what did I do from zero to three? Did I subtract three? No, I added three. It's x's behave inversely. So I'm going to go three to four to seven to 12. Everybody with me there? So I can train. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so I can do my table now with the same thought saying, hey, what am I doing first? Okay, let me change my x's. Now, what's my next thing do? Right? So this is y2 is, is just square root of x minus 3. Now I'm multiplying by 2 on the outside. So y sub 3 is now manipulating only the y values. So now my x's are going to stay the same from my daughter to my granddaughter, 3, 4, 7, 12. But my y values are now going to get doubled because that's what I'm doing now. I'm doubling the y's. So what do I get? 2 times 0 is 0. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 3 is 6. And so all I'm asking you to do, and, and could I jump right away to adding 3 to the x's and doubling the y's? Yes. But until you're comfortable with what's going on, you're trying to think of things kind of step by step. So watch what happens when I plug in. Uh, star, right? So y, sub, y of star is what? Square root of 9, which is 3. And then over here, y of star is square, 2 times the square root of 12 minus 3. That's 2 times the square root of 9. That's 2 times 3. That's 6. And so in both of them, did it get me where I should have gotten to? Yes. So, so, so that's this way of being able to manipulate these kind of tables. Let me let me go to my calculator real quick here. Okay, so if you're doing this with me on your calculator and I start going too fast, slow me down. So I've got my TI-84 here. Okay, let's go to here. This is a free emulator. You can get this on your computer. Uh, I want to put in my two functions, the square root of x time is it? Oh my god, I'm never going to end early. I was promising I was going to end early, but that's not going to happen, sorry. And then 2 times square root of x minus 3. And then I'd like to look at the table. So you can see, uh, I usually should go to table set. Make sure it's starting at 0 and going by 1s. Uh, and that's fine. And, but then if I look at my table, right, um, I want to verify. So x and y1 is my first table. So 0, 0, 1, 1, that's all working. That's good. My other table, what started at 4, 2, right? I'm sorry, at 3, 0. So I'm just verifying that my, that, that my tables are matching up, right? That I can see my x, y1 table on there. I can see my x, uh, y2 table, my x, y3 table, whatever I, I end up doing. All right, we've got one last thing to do. I'm not going to not gonna get it done, but I've done it a couple of times already. I want to show that a quadratic like this, x squared minus 6x plus 4, is actually a daughter function of the mother function x squared. Right, so I apologize. I said I was going to be done early. I was really hoping to be done early because I want a cup of coffee. So uh, show uh, f of x equals x squared minus 6x plus 4 is a translation of g of x equals x squared. And the way we're going to do this is complete the square. So if I, if I don't get to the step-by-step -step today, remind me I'm doing that Monday for you. Um, but I, I want to factor out a, the leading coefficient of the first two terms if it's not 1. So even if it is 1, I will do that. I'm going to factor out the leading coefficient of the first two terms. 
So I would call this guy B, and I like to call this one K. Once I factor out the leading coefficient, uh, I'm saying that that X coefficient is now K. And the joke is, if you see K, you're fine. If you don't see K, you're, if you see k <laughs> So, so k is negative 6, half of k is negative 3, and then half of k quantity squared is, is positive 9. I'm going to add that 9 on the inside. I'm going to add the 9 on the inside and subtract it on the outside. So factor out the leading coefficient, find k, find half of k, square it, add it on the inside, subtract it on the outside, and then every single time, uh, you, this first piece here is going to factor into x minus half of x plus half of k quantity squared, and of course you could FOIL that out and verify it, and then a minus 5. So you can see that I've shifted my x squared function 3 to the right and then down 5. So there's y equals x squared. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I've shifted my function down here. And what's more important is the vertex is always at uh, 3 comma negative 5, the opposite of the x shift and the, and the direct of the y shift. Kind of cool. Let's do another one. So here's one with a leading coefficient. So 2x squared minus 20x plus 53. I forget it already. Yeah, minus 20x plus 53. So we want to show that this is a, a transformation of x squared by completing the square, right? So I'm going to factor out that leading 2. Only from the first two terms, though. And you say, well, why? And I say, well, because that's what my teacher taught me. So I'm not expecting you to be a genius and realize why. I'm just expecting you to be a robot. Be a good robot. Eat your batteries. Right? Do, do what I tell you to do. So now I can see the K value, right? 20 negative 20 was the b value, right? Kind of an ax squared plus bx plus c. So, but now I see k is negative 10. And half of k is negative 5. I'm going to use that half of k when I factor. But I can see that half of k quantity squared, oops, half of, I keep doing that, is 25. So I want to add 25 on the inside here. But I have to realize that I'm actually adding 50. I'm thinking about what happens when I distribute this. So I have to get rid of that 50 here. So I have to, I have to think about adding that 25 on the inside is actually adding a 50. So now I get 2 times the quantity of x plus k, quantity squared, minus 3. And there's my transformed mother function x squared. Shouldn't it be plus three at the end? Thank you. <laughs> Just checking. <laughs> Just checking to see if you're awake. Nice. Actually, we're done. We're done today. We are done a little early. So, but that process for completing the square, you can go Google somebody, but mine is factor out the leading coefficient from the first two. Find the k, find half of k, 
find that value squared, add it on the inside, subtract it on the outside, factor, and then you've got your vertex form. You've got your transformation. Yeah, and when they start putting fractions in it, it sucks. You know that. It's only up to eight questions there. Cool. All right. Well, I'll stick around if you.